Is this recording? Uh, yes, it looks like it is. Uh, okay, this is Matt Pullen, and we are going to do a, uh, a YouTube chess streaming event. Uh, I, we're on the chess cube here on the other side of the board. Uh, we have Jay Roby. Uh, you may know him from his YouTube channel, Jay Roby Chess, and uh, my YouTube channel, of course, Greencastle Block. And uh, yeah, we uh, we're going to play a a game, a standard game with uh, you know live dual commentary. Um, I guess this this has been done before, but what we're going to add to it uh, in this format is like you're going to hear my commentary, and then after the game, you know we're going to do a uh, you know a Skype call, and we're going to discuss what happened in the game together. And he's also going to upload a copy where you can hear his commentary, but not mine. And then at the end, uh, you know, the, the dual, the, uh, the shared commentary. Uh, so like it's a dual plus shared, it's a dual commentary plus post-mortem, I think. Um, see, my, uh, my cordless mouse is uh, blinking at me, so I hope it doesn't die during the, you know, during the game. Um, anyway. So J. Roby says he is ready, and I will say I am ready to good luck. All right. So we will we will start. He's opening with e4, and um, well, I don't I don't really know anything about what uh, J. Roby plays. So I guess I'm gonna let's see. Should I do Sicilian or e5? I think I'm going to go with my. Uh, was another one of my favorite lines, the, uh, the Pribble, which is, you know, d6, c6, knight f6. So first I throw in knight f6, so it more or less forces him to play knight c3, and then c6. So here it's uh, sort of a sort of a waiting move. Uh, I'm not, uh, I can play pawn to e6 or pawn to e5. I can uh, fianchetto my uh, dark square bishop or not. Uh, another plan is to play knight d7 and then e5, going into a Philidor type setup, you know, but taking away some of White's better lines in the Philidor. Um, and uh, yeah, another strategy is to bring the bishop out, like after his move knight f3, bring the bishop out to g4, and then I want to play pawn e6 and pawn d5, which. Uh, Create sort of a, a French type structure with my bad bishop, the light square bishop outside. So he's chosen a fairly solid move order here, and I think d5 is playable here. I'm I'm gonna play bishop e7. I think uh, queen a5, you know, pinning his knight on c3, so I'm threatening knight e4 is no big deal because he just plays queen d2. It's probably the move he wants to play next anyway, so. I don't want to play knight d7 too soon, because then if I play d5 and he answers e5, my uh, king knight wants to drop back to d7. So bishop e7 is the best waiting move, or I could play d5, or I could just exchange on f3 preemptively to bring his bishop to f3 and then play d5. Um, I'm going to play bishop e7. So maybe he thinks I'm trying to castle quickly to the king side, but... Uh, all right, so he's playing the uh, the queen to d2, which is normally con connected with castling queenside. If I take on f3, uh, I suspect he'll take with pawn, because that leaves his bishop uh, watching the uh, the c4 square. Again, if I get a knight to b6, maybe it, it'd be annoying to try and hop into c4. Uh, but no, if I take right away, I think he plays g takes, and uh, you know keeps keeps his bishop on this diagonal. And also the g takes, you know, the g file is helpful for white, because he's castling long. Uh, I could bring the bishop back to h5 and then park it on g6 to pressure his e4 pawn. Uh, could, I could play d5 or knight d7. So I'm thinking, thinking actually d5. And then if, if, if e5 may be knight e4, you know, with the tempo on his queen. Because if he plays knight takes, then pawn takes, he 
moves his knight somewhere, and then I take on e2. That could leave me with a potentially weak pawn on e4. Um, or I can just drop back to d7. Anyway, I think, I think d5 is the right move here, just to establish a presence in the center. So he could he could trade on d5, but he probably is going to go for space and push e5. And then I'm think I'm trying to think, is this an appropriate position for knight e4, or do I just drop back with the, the king knight to d7 and then pop out to b6? One of the things that you have to, yeah, one of the things you have to be concerned about in this type of structure is that white is going to hop his knight out to g5, and then there will be tension between black's uh, light square bishop and white's light square bishop. White would like to trade his light square bishop for a knight, ideally, uh, and and not the other bishop, you know, because of the, uh, you know, the potency of knights in close positions and whatnot. Uh, so here, knight e4, I have to think about the tactics of knight e4 and how is that, uh, is, is this a specific position where the knight e4 motif is working for black? Knight e4, knight takes, pawn takes, then his knight is hit. He probably can't play knight g5 because then I take on e2. Of course, he could take back with king. And then his g5 square is sufficiently guarded. You know, I'd have two attackers, he'd have two defenders, and also my e4 pawn would be kind of hangy. Um, yeah, so knight e4. I think knight takes is definitely the most critical move there. Knight e4, knight takes, pawn takes. You could just drop back knight, e, knight to g1. Then I could just drop back bishop f5. Um, no, I think knight takes, pawn takes, and knight g5 is definitely the most critical thing to be looking at. So threatening to just capture back on e4 with uh, his knight. And he's also threatening my bishop. So I guess I could drop back with my bishop to f5 in that case, protecting e4. Hmm. Uh, then he could he could put his pawn on no I can't put his pawn on g4 because then my uh, so pawn g4 takes takes pawn g4 yeah he can play g4 and force my bishop back to g6 and play I can't play h4 in that position hmm. huh, again I don't I don't remember the specifics of this position I I, su I assume he is thinking about you know whether I'm going to play knight e4 or not, because knight d7 is the obvious dropback. If I play knight uh, d7, perhaps uh, white plays his, uh, well, he plays knight g5, I just take on e2, takes back, I can kick him with h6. I guess that's fine for me, knight f d7. Um, H4 takes takes knight g5. If he plays knight g5, I'd certainly don't want to take with the bishop on g5, because um, my dark squares would be quite weak. Um, so takes takes knight g5, bishop takes, and he has to take with king because he has to hold on g5. I could play queen d5 to protect the e-pawn. Um, hmm. You could play b3, preparing to play c4. I don't know, I think it, this looks speculative, but I, I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to hit him with the knight e4. And if he just moves his queen, then, you know, I get to trade some material off the board, and it's probably fine. Or I guess I could intensify. I could play bishop 
b4 or queen a5 and try to intensify the pressure on c3. But I'm, I'm kind of assuming he's going to take on e4. Queen d3 is probably bad because I have bishop f5 setting up a discovery of some kind. Like knight takes f2. I wonder if there's sort of a, uh, a psychology effect going on here. Like he, he sees that I spent so much time preparing knight e4, so he's wondering, uh, you know, well, if he spent this much time and determined knight e4 is good, then, you know, it must be sound. But I don't necessarily know that that's the case. there's no real reason to pre-move with this much time in the game, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my, uh, you know, with the slow strategic nature of my position if he doesn't take on e4. Taking on e4 is critical. Knight takes, pawn takes, and then I think knight g5 is the best move. With, uh, you know, if I take on e2, he's taking with king. So after his king takes back, he'll be threatening knight takes on e4, which I'm thinking about playing queen d5 to, uh, another idea would be to play pawn c5. I think then he can sufficiently play pawn c3. All right, so he decided to go for it here. Knight g5, and now, now I do have a choice. Um, I could drop back with my bishop to guard the pawn, bishop f5, but what I was concerned about was bishop f5, g4, and then I have to play bishop g6, and he plays h4, you know, with the, the attack based on the vulnerability of my, uh, of my bishop. Um, so... I don't want any part of that, so I'm just going to chop the bishops off, and he's taking with his king, as I thought he would. And here I have two real choices, queen to d5, guarding the pawn, or just chop on g5. I don't really want to give up my uh, dark square bishop, so that suggests that queen d5 would be my move. But I'm wondering if queen d5, he plays b3 with the idea of pawn to c4, and then my queen can't hold on to the e4 pawn. So, queen d5, he plays b3. I can play b5 to stop him from playing c4. Or I could play c5 with the idea that he plays c4, I'm giving my queen a square on c6. Um, I don't like the idea of you know, c5, because this is a position where white is pretty well developed. And I, it seems like if I'm playing c5 with that, allowing him to open the position. And, uh, so, queen d5, b3, b5. He plays a rook to c1, and I can't really stop him from playing c4. Uh, okay, queen b5, b3, queen b5, or queen d5, b3, queen b5 check, c4, and that check didn't really accomplish anything. Um, so, queen d5, I really have to worry about after b3 uh, about him just kicking my queen away and then playing knight takes e4. So one thing I can do here is I can play queen d5 and then if b3 then I can take on g5. And then when he plays bishop takes that perhaps makes his d4 pawn, d4 pawn a little more, more vulnerable and then I can play c5. I do have to watch out for possible checkmate patterns with his bishop on g5 and a heavy piece coming to d8. But yeah, that, that looks like my best strategy here. Queen d5, if he plays b3, then um, then I... Oh, I'm, I'm down to five minutes. I really have to be moving a lot faster than this. So is there any other move? He can't really attack e4 any additional time, so if he plays a move other than b3, I can just 
kick his knight with h6, so. So, other moves he might try here. f3, perhaps. If f3, I think I have to play pawn takes. But that's probably fine for me, because I've just exchanged off my weakest pawn. Again, if b3, then I think I must exchange on g5. Because otherwise he pushes with c4 and my queen can't go anywhere. Um, yeah. A good move of his might be maybe h4. Or knight h3 with the idea of knight f4. Yeah, that knight h3 idea, knight h3, knight f4 attacking my queen. That, that looks a little bit annoying. Oh, wait a minute. Do I, have, I have, like, queen b5 check. That's like a secondary threat, isn't it? To try and win the b-pawn. But if I win this b-pawn, he brings a rook to b1, then my b-pawn is also weak. So queen b5, not really a threat here. I'd really like to, you know, kick his knight away. May bring my knight to a6 and play c5. So the critical line here is for him playing b3 and then me playing bishop takes g5. And then I play c5. That's the attack on d4. Alright, so this really intensifies the... Uh, you know, the, the threat of coming down the d-file on me. Um, if I play h6, he just goes back h3 and then it's coming into f4 anyway, so... Um, see, I can play queen b5, give him check, and then his king just goes to e1, and now I have to worry about the e4 pawn, so... Uh, knight a6 just developing seems better. Here, follow up might be c5. So, hmm, I wonder if there are certain situations where I can drop a bishop on b4, like queen b5 check, king e1, bishop b4. He has c3 there. But if there was some exchange of the c-pawns, then that might be a more viable threat. So, I guess now that my e6-pawn is guarded, I could also contemplate pushing my f-pawn. Pawn, pawn to f6. Is there any way for him to exploit that? His queen's on a dark square. He has no light square bishop. So pawn to f6 might be a good move. Might be a good move in the future. Put pressure on his e5 pawn. Alright. So. Yeah, he is threatening that. Again, so. Um, pawn to f6. <sighs> I could play b5. B5, he just brings the rook to c1. In the previous position, I thought that I had uh, determined that I had to take on g5. See, if I play f6, he just plays c4, my queen can't go anywhere, and e4 is dropping. So this has to be played now. Oh, what? What? All right, so pawn to c5 is probably going to be met with, uh, he'll probably take it. Um. Oh. Hmm. Again, because pawn to c4 is the move I really have to be concerned about. I think I have to play c5 here, for better or worse. In order to try to... 
course, he could play c4 here. And then if I take, queen takes, pawn takes, rook takes, and now the, uh, the e4 pawn is dropping, so. Um, yeah, that's, that's a little concerning. This is not, that's not a great endgame. Um, so it's, can I drop back at all? I don't want to drop, I can't really drop back when he plays c4. c4, my queen drops back, he plays d5. And he's just crashing down the d file. I don't want to let him get connected pawns on e5 and d5. Um, so if he plays c4, I have to take, and then just try and hang on. Oh, what is it? Let's see. Well, at least I know right away, you know, where where I went wrong in this game, because uh, the knight e4 was too maybe too speculative. I should have just dropped back knight f d7, but I figure it wouldn't be interesting if I played too conservatively. Yep, yep, that is the, uh, well, um, well, I can't take this, because then queen, d8 check, rook takes, rook takes his mate. Um, I can take on d2, and then play knight takes c5. Um, I can play, uh, f6 doesn't work. Let's see. I can play knight c7 to protect d5. Knight c7. And then you can play c4. Yeah, then you play c4, then I have to trade queens, and now my knight has no good moves. So I think I have to take on d2 here. Uh, yeah. So I've got this really weak pawn on e4. He has two sort of weak pawns. Um, so I'm not I'm not quite getting checkmated yet. I can castle kingside, you know, whenever I get the time, or I can play h6 and g5 to chase his bishop away, and then play king e7. Um, but I think I should take first on c5. Takes on c5. Um, uh, castles takes on c5. Uh, he could play bishop e3 protecting c5, so I guess I guess I have to take now if I want to take at all. Yeah, if he if he doubles rooks, I have to castle uh, because otherwise I'm getting made it off the board. Uh, a move I want to play is pawn to a5, securing my knight on c5. Actually, that doesn't make sense, because he can play bishop e3 and trade off for my knight at any time. So, so he, he has a real chance to beat me in this. This is not a good end game for black. All right, now I have to get out of there. Otherwise, he's just going to win. Uh, if he kicks me with... Oh, yeah, gosh. Um, uh, rook c8, and then he takes, and back row mates me. Um, so... So I have to give up the exchange here. Um, what's the best way to give up the exchange? Just uh, see. That is, this is unpleasant. Can I play e3 here? e3 hits his rook. If he plays pawn takes, I have knight e4. He can keep the king takes, though. Oh, well, I'll toss that in there. Because that pawn's probably. And then if he plays king takes, I guess I just have to move my knight somewhere. Like, I can play b6. Yep. Alright. I like b6 here. 
I have to have to take here, and he's probably going to check and force this exchange. And a five to keep my to keep my knight, keep him from playing b4 and kicking my knight away. So he can play rook b8 to get behind, attack my b pawn, and now I have to play knight d7, I guess. Um, let's play. Let's play h5 just to get get less of these pawns on the. Try and minimize the number of weak pawns in my position. Um, rook d7. Oh, there's just nowhere good for me to good for me to do here. Um. Five. I'll just I'll move around. There, yeah. There's really no, and I I can't let F seven drop. That would be too easy for him. Um, I can come to T seven, and then and then King D eight. Try and try and force his see if he plays his rook to the back rank. Hmm. And now I can't really well see d5 would be a good square to go to to fork his rook and king when he takes on b6, but there's no way for me to get there. So I guess I just have to move my king. And then just pointlessly wait until he brings his king in through the light squares. King d3, king c4, king b5, king a6. That is a very... Well... Would have been a very straightforward plan for him to win. Um, so he's got to play rook c6 here, right? To keep my king cut off. I guess not. So how then So I can't ever let his rook come and attack the f7 square. I can't let his king get into a6 either. So I guess I just have to drop my knight on b8 and move back and forth. Or just move my knight back and forth c5 and d7. So I've got under a minute left, and he has like two minutes and such. But I mean, I have a position where I have almost no moves. why he made that last move. He's making this more complicated on himself. So king c4, knight e4 might work for me. Can't really play b4. I can take and then take on And take on A. Uh, I have to guard this. Okay, and then he just gets a straightforwardly winning on a game. Yep.
Okay. Well, that uh, that was a game. Hey, uh, Jay Roby. Hey, Matt. Hey, hey Matt. Matt. That, 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 that was intense, Matt. That was intense. That was a good game. That was a good yeah, game. Was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. Let me just flip back, to, just the flip back to the beginning here. So we are live so We are now. live now. Yeah. All right, so... All right, so... I guess... Uh, uh, I can go back and forth between the moves on my board here. So. Yeah, and then they'll yeah, be able to and then they'll be able to see that on your and channel, and I'll do the same on mine. I'm gonna get to the point, point where I was feeling, feeling a lot of pressure. What, what move are what move are you at on? Uh, I'm going forward uh, from the beginning. Uh, um, I'm going um, to. I'm going to. I, I'm gonna probably. I, I'm start gonna probably where start where I played queen to d2. Move seven. Move seven. Yeah, I. I. Uh, Queen to d2, obviously you were intending to castle queenside, right? I was trying to keep, I was my, trying options to keep my options open, open. And I was, talking, and about I was talking about that on the, on the, video, on the, on the video because I wasn't sure I wasn't what you were sure what you're trying, you were, trying to do. I knew that your knight on uh, b8 uh, was, was a little bit locked in, and I knew that you, you, you could swing him over to a6, attacking on the c5. I thought c5 was going to be like the bane of my existence, so I was trying to figure out... The thing in the position after black plays d5 and then white plays e5, sometimes black can play knight e4 and you know try and create some extra tension. And then if uh, if there's an exchange on e4, the d file opens and black is able to put pressure on white's uh, d4 pawn. But I don't yeah, think I don't think, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's I don't think it's quite appropriate in this particular position. Um, yeah. Yep. Well, you know, I was thinking, you know, about, I was thinking I about, about, I actually um, spent, when you watch the video, when you watch on, the video on my end, you'll see me talking a lot about, a lot about what, what I was going to do there, because I wasn't sure, because I, wasn't sure. I, was, I was thinking, okay, I was thinking, so, okay, I, so I actually wasn't expecting you to play 19 in that position, that position. Did, and when you did, I spent a lot of time, spent lot of time thinking about how I was going to react, because I obviously the queen's under attack, so I got to do something. Yeah, that takes is really the only serious i mean if you play well if you play queen d3 that's pretty bad because of bishop f5 uh, yeah so i yeah. guess if you your only other choice is to play your queen to the uh, to the back rank and then i can just think about like piling on with queen a5 and bishop b4 and then yeah you know as yeah, the, get double pawns you know the more pieces that get traded off is you know is more comfortable for me um yeah if, if yeah. i have a pawn structure that's harmonious with the uh you know, the bishops I've gotten outside of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, taking taking just, you know, takes and then knight g5. Again, I thought this was the correct way to play. And then takes and you took with king. I think black is just too underdeveloped for this idea to work. Yeah, I talked to... Yeah, I, I talked was, to... I was, I was, I was, I was like trying, like, one of my main goals. goals. I, was like, I, I was like, I kept talking about your knight on b. Mm -hmm. that, I wanted that I wanted to keep him on as, as long as I possibly, possibly could. But then when you brought him in, so after you played, so after queen, you played queen to d5... Yeah, five, queen d5, then, I... Uh, I wasn't sure. There, there were some ideas where I, I thought you were just going to play, like, b3 and c4 right away. And then... Uh, Hmm, I don't know. I, I just when I got here, I realized how difficult my position was going to be. You know, and Black would like to be playing c5, knight c6. That's that's the ideal. But I think I had to play. Like when you played rook d1, I think c5 is just too dangerous for me. So I had to bring the knight out to to a6 to try and, you know, at least try and get my uh, back row connected. Yeah. Um, yeah. So b3, yeah. I thought this was was good because after c4, there's really no options for me. Um, one thing, I could play bishop b4 here, and then force you to play c3, and then play back to, uh, bishop a5, but I think there you just play queen c2, and I didn't see a good way of guarding e4. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was worried a lot I was about worried my, a lot uh, about my, um, like the, the, like B3 the, the b3 c4 for me, for me I was really worried about my king on uh, e2, uh, from your queen, um, from your queen hitting a check on b5. Yeah, but that, that b2 pawn is really no big deal. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't yeah. really want to take that pawn because it's if your rook gets into b7, that could be quite dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I felt compelled to take, and then c5, you know, and then I, I, maybe you can play pawn to c4 here. This, this was the other move I was thinking about. Pawn to c4, and then I take twice, and then your rook comes to d4, and then I, you know, I'm losing my pawn on e4. 
Uh, but I, think, I, 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 I thought about I, it, I but, thought then about then it thought but then I thought what you'd do is play clean back to uh, D8, and then, D8 and then I wouldn't get my piece well, back. Well, no, I guess, well, I, no, I, guess I still could. Uh, if I play my queen back anywhere, you can just push your pawn to D5 then. You know, C4, queen goes back anywhere, D5. And now now white has two pawns on E5 and D5, and you know, yeah. black's not yeah. castled, and that is quite disastrous. So you took here, and clearly, I mean, obviously I saw that I can't give up mate on D8. Um... So I can't really, I can't take either pawn. I was considering playing knight c7 here just to guard uh, the d5 square, but then you just play pawn to c5. Yeah. And my yeah. knight is now misplaced because now your c4 pawn is taking away the d5 and b5 squares, and the knight's doing nothing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe, gosh, maybe I just castle here and let you take on let you win a pawn on d5, and then you get to win an additional pawn on e4. I don't know, this, this, I, I pretty much knew where this was headed here. This is, takes now, I have to get out of checkmate on d8, and then this. Yeah, I, I didn't see this coming, but it was rather, I was just too, is, is there any other thing that I can do about this here? Um, which mover are you which on? Which mover are you on movie uh, I'm The move after you doubled rooks. Oh okay. Oh okay. Hmm. Because you're, so, you're yeah, clear. Yeah, so yeah, thinking, yeah. I was thinking. Um, um, well, if we go back, well, if we go back just, just. No, actually, we don't. No, need actually, to go back. we don't need to. Because I know, back. Cause I, I know, was, like, I was, I was thinking that you might have. If I was like, if I was like having a very lucky, lucky Easter, Easter day or something, that you might have taken on your five with your queen. And I was calculating that, but that obviously wasn't happening. So after I doubled. After you doubled, you're threatening to mate me on. Yeah. Yeah. So. And my castle, you played bishop e7. Uh, is there anything... I can't guard the d8 square in any other way. I would have to, like, play f6 or something. f6, uh, that just hemorrhages all sorts of material, though. Um, is is, is, uh, is uh, uh, rook um, f8 over, f8 two over c8, two c8 uh, um, available? No, my is still on e8. You, you just played... Uh, this is move... Gosh, what move is this? Uh, back up, back up, back up. Oh, 17. Rook AD1. Oh, Rook AD1. Oh, Rook AD1, okay. I think Black is just lost here. Uh, the only other option is just to play F6. But then just Pawn takes F6. And maybe, yeah, maybe after, yeah, maybe yeah after the Bishop on D5 takes, is just uh, a nightmare. Maybe after Pawn takes F6, I castle Kingside. And then you play Pawn takes G7. And then I can't really take it um, because of bishop e7. Yeah, so that, that, that would possibly have been even worse than what happened in the game. So castles, bishop e7, and I decided to throw in e3 just in case you, you know, decide to take with pawn and let me get knight e4. Um, now you took with king, and now this is just lost. Um, traded... And some other moves happened, and I got just a, a very sad position where uh, my king and knight can't really attack anything. I thought, I thought when uh, when I played hmm, about yeah, tell about, me the, yeah, tell me the move number that you're on. About twenty nine. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. I was I was thinking your your best winning plan would just be to activate your king along king d3, king c4, king b5, and yeah. bring, bring yeah. the king in through the light squares. And you started doing some other things, which made me think that I might have a chance to survive the position. <laughs> you just wait till you watch, just my, wait you watch my video. I, think, I, think I started to say, okay, this is probably where I'm going to collapse. <laughs> all right, so I, know, I, know I, know your I know your end game beautiful, is beautiful, but, but like all, all, like all, moves, all my pawn uh, moves, if you go back, uh, you go to, back to... Yeah, given what happened in the game, you know, knight c5 just lost, uh, I played 36 knight c5, you know, after I won the a-pawn, 36 knight c5, and that just lost very simply after rook's, rook takes and you sacrifice the exchange and I knew you were going to win. Um, yeah, yeah. So there, I mean, the only other real move, you know, any king, any king move loses material, so I have to play knight b2 in that position. But, I mean, b2 is just a terrible place to have a knight. Yeah. In fact, if I yeah. play knight b2, you play king c3, and then my knight can't go to d1 because your rook has that covered, so my knight would have to go back to 
a4, and then you play king b4, attacking my knight. And again, if I bring my knight to c5, you check and then take on c5. It's the same thing as the game. If I bring my knight to b2 in that position, then you play king b3, and now my knight is totally trapped. Again, my knight, with that awkward knight square on b2, there's really yeah. very few... Yeah. You know, there's very few ways I can get out of that corner, and you have them all. So, again, if I play knight b2 instead of knight c5, you simply win a piece. Um, yeah. So knight yeah. c5, and then, well, if I say this, this is a uh, pretty obvious win for white. Wait, so you played... Uh... Oh, yeah, you push. Well, I guess that's fine. Um, Which move? Which move? I guess it's... Uh, I guess, it doesn't really matter. It's in the position where I was just pre-moving endlessly and trying to trying to survive with my lone pawn. So so yeah, that, that was a good game. I, uh, I I took a gamble with knight e4 in a uh, in a position where it was uh, totally unnecessary, and you played pretty well. And well, well, thank you very well, much. Well, thank you very really much, and I'm really looking forward to seeing your your side of your the, side thought, of the process thought process when I go back. When I go back. And you'll see, <laughs> you'll, see some, you'll see me. Well, I was I was under pressure a lot there in a lot of key positions. I was just like, I I, 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 I was we got into the end game. I was like, okay, this is probably where I'm gonna die because in all your videos, like your end game play is is awesome. But I I had the 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 piece. That's the only reason. Yeah, but that you know I think it's not a position where the knight can really prosper because I have to there's so much that I have to guard against basically I have weak pawns on both sides and yeah anyway let's uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's cut it off now and I'm gonna, gonna upload and you'll upload to your channel and we'll see uh, we'll see what happens in the, uh, All in right. the comments All right. thanks a lot thanks Matt, thanks a lot, Matt. Matt. I enjoyed that take care yeah let us know guys what you think of this uh, of this format and yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up if you guys want to see more. Sure make sure you check out each channel. Leave thumbs up, thumbs up there. Subscribe, subscribe to Matt if you're not subscribed, vice versa. And uh, thanks for yeah. watching. Uh, see you later, J. Roby. See you. Bye. See you.